Hello there, bonjour, I am Emily, um, I'm in charge of the teaching services at Primary Languages Network, uh, which include the team of associate teachers. So we currently have about 26 teachers working in about 60 schools in the northwest of England and they de deliver weekly lessons in French, Spanish and German. So for the second year, I'm really pleased to be able to bring you this video where we hear some of our teachers talking you through uh, some lesson ideas, some resources, how they've used the resources, some teaching tips and tricks, um, proven and tested in the primary classrooms. So I hope you enjoy watching this video. Bye. Hello. So I'm here today to show you one of the resources that I've used recently. Um, so the resource, um, looks like this and you can see the, the the students would have already done a lot of work on parts of the body they would have sung head shoulders knees and toes so they would be quite familiar with this vocabulary um so the the three words that are learning um new are siente tocate and mueve so for siente i taught them an action which is like a yoga action it's like your hands together like this and we went through it siente um, then we did tocate and then we did mueve and we did quite a bit of practice there I asked them to um, close their eyes and try and picture the words in their head and um, do the action at the same time so they learned those three words really well um, then we did some practice um, as a class, so I asked them to do certain things like siente los hombros, so they had to go siente los hombros, or tocate los hombros, it would have been tocate los hombros, or mueve los hombros. And once we did lots of practice with that, um, they did it in pairs, um, so one of them gave an instruction and the other one had to repeat um, the action. And then they swapped over and then we played a, a Simon Says as well um, as a class. And then they did it in their tables as well. So one of them was uh, the quiz master and had to give the instructions and then did one round of that. And then someone else took over um, so that they could all have a little practice. Then we watched Irene's um, video that comes from the same um, PowerPoint as this. Um, so it came with the background of music so the students had to do that then i asked them to write a set of instructions using this siente tocate and mueve so they did this in pairs so they had to write at least 10 instructions and think about which order they were going to say it some of them added things like quédate quieto stay still or respira breathe from irene's um video and the following lesson um, I got some mindfulness music um, of YouTube and um, some volunteers came out and they read their instructions to the rest of the class and the rest of the class had to do um, the body scan um, with them. Um, so the kids really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed it. They were very good. I hope this is useful to you um, and see you soon. Thank you for listening. Guten Tag, ich heiße Beth McCord. Um, I'm a PLN associate teacher and I teach German in a primary school to years five and six. Year five are stage one language learners of German, but have had experience doing French for two years already. So I use stage one and stage two work to make sure that they have enough challenge and interest. One of my favorite topics to do is the jungle animals, which is from stage two, summer one. So I'm going to show you lesson four today. This is where we do the story. So you can see that we start with the phonetic detectives, which is where you get the words, you hear the words to start with, and the children have a go at writing down the words. They're words that they've come across in the previous lesson. So they just Eine Schlange. hear the word, have a go at writing it down on a whiteboard or a scrap piece of paper and then check 
whether their spellings are correct. And it's a great opportunity to um, have a look at spelling patterns and phonics in that language. Then you go on to the story. And it's up to you how you can introduce the story. But uh, I got the children to have a go at actually reading in the target language, reading aloud, rather than just listening to me or listening to the native speaker. They actually had a go at reading off the screen. And there's a repeated um, chorus, if you like, throughout the story. So it's Wir laufen durch den Jungen, hört gut zu und schaut herum. Was gibt es alles zu sehen? Groß und orange, was ist das? Es ist eine Giraffe. And it repeats that pattern all the way through using lots of different animals. And the children love it. So they have the opportunity to read aloud. They have the opportunity to then move on to create like a class performance. So we had children around the room pretending to be all the different animals, um, which they loved. And the rest of us were the jungle explorers. We stood up, we were left from Dush de Jungle. Everyone joined in with that bit. And then I chose individual children to read aloud the adjectives before we spotted the, uh, the animal. Um, we then discussed the adjectives. We made sure we understood what they meant. Uh, we used our quiz quiz swap cards from the previous lesson where they have a little card with an animal on it and they'd have to keep it hidden walking around the room. And when they met somebody, they would ask, was ist das? and they'd have to give the adjectives. They weren't allowed to say the noun at this point. They'd have to give the adjectives to describe the animal. Um, and then if a other person could guess what it was from the adjectives, they got to take their card. If they couldn't, they kept their card. And it made us start thinking about what other adjectives we could use to describe animals, um, which led nicely on to, let's get out of the way. Um, we, no, no, this one. To so this task where we looked at more nouns for the, uh, for wild animals, we had an opportunity to work out if there were cognates, semi-cognates, things like that. And then actually I gave them dictionaries and asked them to look up their own adjectives. Um, to describe those animals. There's just so much scope with this topic. We use dictionaries a lot. We did dictionary work. We checked our, how that we knew how to use the bilingual dictionaries. There were loads of games. And ultimately, it ended up with the children writing their own version of the story. So some of them chose to do it as a poster. Some of them chose to do it as a mini book. And there was some really excellent work and the children really enjoyed it. Thank you. So I want to share with you this resource, which is a conversation. And here is in space. It belongs to our summer one stage three um, unit called Out of the Out of This World. And as you can see, it's going to be um, a conversation between an astronaut and uh, and myself here. But it could be two astronauts. And what I really like about this resource is that um, the um, conversation is slowly appearing. So as you can see, we can see the speech bubbles appearing as if we were having a conversation. So the way I've been using this resource is I've split the class in two halves. One half is the white speech bubble and the other half is the yellow speech bubble. So they've been practicing the conversation in big groups. So for example, the whole of uh, half of the class would say this speech bubble, then the other side of the class would say that one, and so on. So they are slowly building to practicing a conversation, but there's lots of scaffolding in place. So first of all is uh, repeating the conversation as, big, as a class, as, as a, in big groups. After this stage, you might want to go back to uh, the beginning of the conversation and ask if there is any volunteer, would they like to be the yellow speech bubble or the white speech bubble? And you can practice with that volunteer the conversation. Now you can do this with several volunteers. And then once you've done that a few times, they'll have heard and spoken this conversation quite a, quite a lot of times. So they'll be a lot more confident and their pronunciation should have improved. So after that stage, 
sort of stage three, if you like, will be handed over to the children. They can then practice the conversation in pairs. One of them the yellow, one of them the white. And then final step, can, then, can they say the conversation again, but can they change some of the information? So as you can see here, the astronaut is asking, how are you? And I'm saying, I'm on top form. So I could say that I'm happy or I'm hungry, or I could say I'm feeling good. Uh, here, the astronaut is asking, what's your favorite animal? So I could change les chiens for les chats. So really, really easily to just change a little bit of that conversation to then make it their own. And then at the end, they could even write the conversation in their books. Hi everyone. So just to share some activities that have worked really well in my classrooms this year. Um, the first activity is from the Stage 2, Spring 2 part of the Primary Languages VLE, which you can see on the screen behind me. This is in the new Click to Teach section. Um, initially, the children work on learning different parts of the body and then we begin to introduce mindfulness, body scans and yoga sequences in the target language. There are lots of videos already made on the VLE. You can find them in the seasonal specials section. Um, you can also look on Primary Language Network's YouTube channel. And the children that I work with have enjoyed just simply watching and joining in with those videos. It's a really nice activity after lunch or break time just to help calm the children down. But we took it a lot further by um, encouraging the children to write their own body scans and their own short yoga sequences using that prior learning about body parts. So initially the children worked in pairs. They had to go at say, one person saying the phrases, the other person doing the actions and then swapping it over. The children then increased to increase this, this by um, writing down their sequences, making them a bit longer, challenging themselves to extend their sequences. And then, um, as the children were enjoying it so much, we had to go at recording their yoga sequences. So you can hopefully see on the screen next to me that um, I was fortunate enough to be in a school where there's lots of, um, lots of ground outside, lots of areas where the children could just go and they could film their sequences. Um, they really enjoyed doing this. They could get outside, which is always great. They really thought about where they wanted to film. They wanted to make it rela rela relaxing, like the videos that they'd already seen. And um, it was then shared on Twitter. They shared it on their seesaw um, within school. And another thing that we've then gone on to do in another school that I work with, the older children wanted to share their yoga sequences, their mindfulness, their body scans, whatever it is that they've been busy working on in the target language. The older children, so the year five and the year six children, went down to reception year one to share their work with them, which works really well, especially if I know some scheme, some schools have buddies where the year six and the reception and the year one and the year fives are buddied up with a with a friend that year. And that works really well where the older children can, can work with the younger children and um, share their learning. So that was a really nice um, end to the topic, which started off simply just learning body parts and then it just built and built and built. And we just went with the interests of the children. So. Hi, I'm Jill Buckley. I work in four schools, three of them for the network, teaching French from um, year one up until year six. Uh, I wanted to talk today about storytelling and story acting. Um, one of my favourite things to do is teach French through story. Uh, I think it helps create a very um, motivating, fun environment and you can get lots of input of the target language. Um, and it can help them to understand through images and actions and it's something that the children really enjoy and they listen intently and you can have lots of repetition of vocabulary. So one of the favourite stories that I use is one from the network called The Hungry Giant. Um, it's based on, um, well, a little bit on The Hungry Caterpillar, Tony Ross's um, I Want My Dinner. It also comes to mind with the story uh, about a very hungry giant who just lots of fruit and vegetable bring into him. So it's really good for re uh, revising numbers and teaching fruit and vegetables. Um, so recently we've been um, learning the numbers and the vegetables 
before we do the story. And then we've uh, recently been doing this game called Quiz Quiz Swap. So it's um, it's a bit like Quiz Quiz Trade, but there's a little bit of a twist. And the way it works is um, the children have little cards, um, little cards just like these with the fruit and veg they've been learning. And one or possibly two children, depending on your class, has a card with the giant, the very hungry giant who's saying how hungry he is. And the idea of the game is they walk around and they whisper to each other what they have on their card. We've just been doing it with nouns, um, but in future lessons we might have little phrases on the card as they develop the vocabulary. So they're whispering to each other um, and then they swap cards. Now, periodically I will shout out giant, or it's the giant, and they all have to stand still. And whoever has the card of the giant in their hand, then they have to sit down and they have to sit out around. Um, so we, we had two giants when we played it recently. And so the two giants sat down and then we carried on. And then the next time they came back in as the other two giants went, went out. So it was a, a really fun activity, got them up and moving about and got them practicing the vocabulary in a very, um, in a way where they didn't feel too embarrassed to speak as they were whispering so that they wouldn't wake the giant. Whisper. I could go around and I could hear a little bit as well and support. And I did say that they could support each other if anyone wasn't sure how to say a particular word. That worked well to practice the vocabulary. And then we went on to the retelling of the story. And it's a great story for repetition. Um, because you've got the giant who is demanding this fruit and vegetable and all the people in the town are all repeating that, you know, five bananas, five bananas. So the way we, we, we told the story and they listened first, I just told it and they listened first. And then the second time they became the villagers and I became the giant, I became the grumpy giant. So I acted out the giant and they acted... They were the villages in panic, if I give an example from one of the pictures from the story. Um, so the giant demands six peaches. I want six peaches. And the villagers. Well, the children love sort of acting it out and getting involved in the story. Um, I want five bananas. Bananas. Um, so, our develop from that is then in groups the children can then practice and they can take different big turns at being the giant in the villages and within their little groups. It also, we, um, it's a good story because we got to talk about the manners of the giant and how he wasn't speaking very politely. Uh, and the children picked up on that straight away. and. This is going to lead us on then to le a lesson where we will talk about a more polite phrase to use rather than I want. Um, I think that's over me two minutes, but hope, hope there's some ideas there for how you could use um, stories. Merci, au revoir. The task I'd like to share with you is a word wall activity, which is an unmodel activity. Okay, now this task focuses on questions and answers which are jumbled up, so they're in the incorrect order. Now, originally children, or traditionally children will come up to the front and if there's an interactive whiteboard, an interactive screen, move those around, move the words around until they get the correct answer. Um, the way I use this task is I wanted to, I wanted the task not to just be about one child at a time coming up to move the words around on the board. So I asked children to work in pairs. OK, I gave them a blank piece of paper and asked them to write one to ten on that paper. As you can see, there are ten questions for this task. Now, what I did with this task is I wanted it to focus on teamwork 
and I wanted to ensure that everyone in the class was engaged on working out the answers to the task. So the way I did this is we started at zero. OK, so the time started at zero and I asked the children to work with their partner and write down the words in the correct order. And I said, you have one minute to do so. When the timer reached one minute, I then asked children, I, I then clapped three times and then said, pregunta dos, question two. And the children then knew they had to quickly, as quick as they can, they had one minute to discuss with their partner and write down the answer on their paper. As a challenge, I did ask the children to possibly translate that into English for an extra point. And that, that was really good for those that, that had the time to do that or that wanted to take on that challenge. So a little bit of differentiation there. Um, yeah, so we went all the way through the 10, the 10 um, questions. So some of them were questions, some of them were answers, as you can see. And once we went through all 10 of them, I then asked children one at a time to then come to the front and share their answers. Um, this is a great opportunity for, for children to self-assess their work using their purple or green pens. Um, also, children, I guess children didn't feel under pressure um, that they were going to get this wrong if they came up to the front because they'd already had their one minute thinking time. They'd had discussion time with their partner um, to put the words into the correct order. So when they